When stability margins are introduced in textbooks, usually a loop gain is shown to only have a single gain and phase margin. But really, multiple gain and phase margins can exist. Let's first consider the case of multiple gain margins. Here's a hypothetical loop gain which crosses the negative real axis at three locations. The first at the lowest frequency gives a gain margin k star 1 will denote at frequency omega 1 where the loop gain has a value of minus 2. At a frequency omega 2, we have a gain margin of k2 star, and a frequency of omega 3, a gain margin of, o, of k3, where the loop gain is minus 0 0.5. or the phase angle for each of these values of loop gain is minus 180 degrees. So each gain margin, or each k star, is simply 1 over the magnitude of the loop gain when its phase angle is minus 180 degrees. And if we express that in decibels, we can show that it's minus the magnitude of the loop gain, again, when the loop gain is minus 180 degrees. Let's evaluate each of these gain margins. We'll evaluate it for each omega, the gain margin itself, and then the gain margin in decibels. The lowest frequency, omega 1. Lupkin has a value of minus 2, so 1 over 2 is a half. And in decibels, we know that that's minus 6.02 dB. At omega 2, it's 1 over 1.5 or 0.67. And in decibels, minus 3.5. And, and at the highest frequency, 1 over a half or a value of 2, and in decibels, that's 6 dB. So note that we have two negative gain margins. Since we have multiple margins, which ones should we be looking at to assess robustness or assess stability? Another way to ask is, which margins are most conservative? Well, that would be those points on the loop gain, those margins that are closest to the critical point. Let's take a look at those margins from the vantage of the state feedback diagram where between the plant and the controller, we're inserting the disturbance model delta. And we're also breaking out the plant, which is x dot is ax plus bu in terms of its matrices. Now note that disturbance is sitting right between the plant and the controller. We can group it into the plant as a scale factor on the B matrix, on the control input matrix. And from this vantage, we can answer what gain margins mean in terms of a scale on control effectiveness. 
For the first margin, it represents a 50% reduction in control effectiveness. For the second margin, at K star 2, 0 0.67 times B, or a 23% reduction. And for the positive gain margin, a factor of 2, or a 100% increase in control effectiveness. Collecting them together, we have a set of margins. But only a subset of those are important for analysis. The worst case margins are those that are closest to the critical point. And in this case, it's 0.67 and 2, or minus 3.5 and 6 dB. So as a rule, the worst case margins are the maximum of the negative margins and the minimum of the positive margin. And now the case of multiple phase margins. Unit disk, loop gain crossing the unit disk at three points. The lowest frequency will denote omega one, and it has a phase margin of theta one star. The intermediate frequency omega two, phase margin theta two star, and at the highest frequency, theta three star. Now let's take a look at perturbing the loop gain at omega three with the disturbance model delta so that it's equal to minus one or is on the critical point. We essentially insert a pure delay of theta three star into the loop gain to cause that rotation of the phaser at omega three star onto the critical point. The effect is to rotate the phaser from minus 170 degrees roughly by inspection to minus 180 degrees, again to the point of marginal instability, where the phaser of the perturbed loop gain is along the negative real axis. The phase margin of importance, or the worst case margin, is that closest to the critical point. It represents the smallest amount of delay, or the smallest amount of phase lag, to bring the closed loop system to the point of instability, or to make the closed loop system marginally unstable. In summary, when multiple margins exist, we must consider those that are closest to the critical point to analyze the stability and robustness of our closed loop system.